A fully loaded 767-300 is lined up on runway 16 right of Rome Fiumicino Airport, ready to depart with destination Havana, Cuba. During the takeoff run, a few seconds before V1, an alarm bell sounds in the cockpit. The captain decides to continue the takeoff. Once in the air, he realizes that he must bring the plane and its 273 passengers back to the ground, as soon as possible. It was a hot summer day in Rome. A Boeing 767-300, operated by the Italian airline Blue Panorama was loading 63,300 kilograms of fuel, almost 140,000 pounds, in preparation for a 12-hour flight to Havana, the capital city of Cuba. The captain that day was a 46-year-old Italian male, with 9,510 hours of experience, 4420 of which were on the Boeing 767. The first officer was a 40-year-old Belgian male, with 1,153 hours under his belt, 736 of which were on the Boeing 767. Together with the pilots, there were eight flight attendants. During boarding, the atmosphere was joyful, as the 273 passengers were eager to start their vacation. After an uneventful taxiing procedure, at 9.31 UTC, Blue Panorama Flight 1504 lined up on runway 16 right and started the takeoff roll. The first officer was the pilot flying, while the captain was the pilot monitoring. Pilot flying is the pilot at the controls who, regardless of his or her hierarchical functions on board, has the task of piloting the aircraft. Pilot monitoring monitors flight progress and promptly announces any deviations or abnormalities detected. About three seconds before V1, an oral warning sounded inside the cockpit. V1, or decision speed, is the maximum speed at which a rejected takeoff maneuver can be performed, to stop within the available runway length. The captain ascertained that the warning was due to a right engine fire and exclaimed to the first officer, continue. After liftoff, the landing gear was retracted, and the captain requested confirmation from the first officer to reduce the right engine to idle, which he agreed to. He then continued by pulling the associated fire lever, to cut the delivery of fuel and hydraulic fluid to the burning engine. Following those actions, the fire warning stayed on, indicating that the engine was still on fire. The captain discharged the fire extinguishing agent into the right engine, but the fire indication persisted. The situation was very serious, with an inextinguishable fire on the number 2 engine, that could have soon devoured the wing, dooming the plane. The captain declared a mayday to Fiumicino ATC and communicated to them that they would return immediately to land on runway 34 left, the reciprocal of the one they took off from. He also advised the cabin crew to prepare for a ground evacuation, when they landed. He decided for an immediate landing even though they were exceeding the maximum landing weight of about 42,000 kilograms, 90,000 pounds. After completing the communications with ATC and cabin, the captain took over control and became pilot flying. Meanwhile, the first officer took the emergency checklist and performed the engine fire items. After confirming that the fire was still on, the first officer calculated the landing speed with flaps at 20 degrees, and the captain lined the aircraft up with the runway. The landing was quite challenging, with a landing speed 30% higher than normal. The reasons for that speed were the heavy weight of the plane, and the flap setting, which was lower than the normal 30 degrees. Nevertheless, the crew managed to stop the plane within the 3,900 meters, 12,795 feet, of runway 34 left. To dissipate the high kinetic energy of the landing aircraft, the carbon brakes reached extreme temperatures, causing the tires of the main landing gear to deflate. As the plane stopped, the captain commanded the passenger evacuation, which was led by the eight cabin crew. Although one of the six evacuation slides did not open properly, the procedure was completed in about 1 minute and 20 seconds. 
firefighters were waiting for the 767 at the side of the runway. Even if there was no fire coming out of the right engine, they still directed the fire hydrants at that engine and at the brakes, to cool them. Ambulances arrived on site and took 52 passengers to the hospital, where they were treated for minor injuries, related to the evacuation of the plane. There were no fatalities associated with this accident. The accident investigation was carried out by the Italian National Flight Safety Agency, which presented its final report in May 2007, three years after the event. Investigators first focused on what caused the Pratt and Whitney turbofan engine to catch fire. Through the analysis of the engine itself and laboratory tests, they found that a flexible fuel line, which connected the engine-driven fuel pump with the turbine case cooling valve, was leaking abundantly. In this type of engine, the pressurized fuel is used, not only to feed the combustion chamber, but also to hydraulically move the actuator of the turbine case cooling valve. This valve regulates the flow of air to cool the turbine and prevent the materials from stretching due to high temperatures, causing dangerous friction. What had happened was that, while taxiing, the leak in the line, filled the engine's nacelle with fuel. Upon takeoff, this fuel came into contact with hot parts of the engine, triggering an explosion and causing fire to spread. Analyzing under the microscope the metal mesh that covered the damaged pipe, it was discovered that a fatigue break had occurred in correspondence with a bend. By checking the maintenance history of the engine, the investigators discovered that this fuel line had been disassembled twice, for the replacement of the turbine case cooling valve. It is likely that, the deformation that favored the failure of the pipe due to fatigue, was caused during one of the two maintenance operations. Following the accident, the Italian National Flight Safety Agency, issued this recommendation, require engine manufacturers to revise their engine manuals to include information that specifies the minimum bending radius for flexible lines. Another aspect on which the investigators focused, concerned the fact that, despite the continuous activation of the cockpit fire alarm, the firefighters on the ground had not identified any fire coming from the engine. A check of the fire and overheat detection system revealed how the system had short-circuited following the fire. For this reason, a fire indication was given to the crew even when, after the discharge of the extinguishing agent, the fire was, most likely, no longer present. The last aspect of the investigation concerned the actions and decisions taken by the pilots. The captain decided not to interrupt the takeoff run, even if V-1 had not yet been reached, exercising his discretion, taking into consideration all the elements available at that time. The high takeoff weight, the good weather conditions, the type of failure, and the fact that there was no loss of thrust on the affected engine, together with a positive assessment of the controllability of the aircraft, were the factors supporting his decision. The decision to return immediately to the airport, despite exceeding the maximum landing weight, turned out to be correct as the crew could not know that the fire was actually extinguished. It was not possible to dump fuel to reduce the weight, due to the risk of feeding the fire. Evaluating all the available information, the investigators concluded that the crew carried out all the expected emergency maneuvers following the engine fire, in compliance with airline and manufacturer procedures. After the accident, the involved Boeing 767 received a new engine and returned to line operations. The plane flew with several airlines until 2019, before being scrapped in 2021. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and make sure to subscribe to the channel as similar contents are on their way.